Hi everyone, Dr. Linda Kramer and thank you to another ghost story. Okay, before we go into tonight's ghost story, I want to apologise for my voice because it's extremely cold here in Brisbane, Australia. You won't hear about it on the news, but we are breaking records because it's so cold. All they want to talk about is the climate stuff with the change. You know, the world's warming up, but how do you explain what's happening to us, right? Do, 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 do. X-Files type stuff happening. So, please excuse my voice. First thing, news time. My book, Ghosts, The Psychology of Why They Stay, is nearly done. Drum roll, please. This has been about six months where I've been saying it's nearly finished. It's nearly finished. It's nearly finished. But now I can confirm it is about a page short of me giving it to the guy to format it, to put it onto Lulu. So in about two weeks from this video being today, the 22nd of July, 2022, My book will be available on Lulu. Now, I'm only going to offer this one as a PDF version because if it actually gets into a hard copy like my my Heaven Expose, um, my Heaven book, this book is because it's so thick with 300 odd, 360 odd pages, it costs a lot to print and ship it. So the reason why my ghost book is only going to be as a PDF, to save you guys money, we have a place here in Australia called Officeworks. It's where they sell computers, all your stationery supplies, you name it, they have it. So they also do printing services for four cents a page. So I've calculated out my book, this ghost book, If you buy it as a PDF, it's only going to cost you about $8 to print it. A hell of a lot cheaper, okay? But wait, there's more. Because in my Facebook paranormal group, which is called Dr. Linda Kramer Paranormal, I'm going to be giving away free copies. What? Yes. So, if you're not a member of Facebook, Please know there will be other options where I will offer through my videos people to receive a free copy, okay? If you're on Facebook and you'd like to have the opportunity to win a copy, please go to the link, it's in the description, where it says if you wish to join Linda Kramer's Paranormal Facebook group, here's the link. It's called Dr. Linda Kramer. Please make sure you answer the questions so you get approved. I've had trolls, I've had stalkers, I've had very nasty people who are not in the right spiritual context of the people that we want in that group. That was politically correct there, Linda. So you can imagine why we had to make it a private group to stop these leeches coming in and giving bad energy to the people who I'd so welcome and love being in my group, okay? So, come along and join. I'm going to give away free copies. <clears throat> so, at the moment, it is about 220 pages long. It's going to be a very in-depth book, very educational. Um, it's got a lot of research in there, as well as certain ghost stories. So let's get to a ghost story that I haven't talked about before because it's a doozy and it's the ghost story that I, that actually happened to me back in the 1980s and it's the story of the matron. I had a chest cold and I couldn't breathe. So my first husband, who I was married to at the time, not the second one, my first one, okay, he rang an ambulance And at that time, I used to live up north of Brisbane. So I got an ambulance to the Redcliffe Hospital. I did not lose consciousness this night. And I never passed out. 
But when we got to the hospital, the doctors there said, we are going to admit you. So the first thing they did while I was still in the ER, which is emergency room, which some people call that um, emergency, I don't know, whatever you call it in your country. But while I was still in emergency, they put a couple of couple of cannulas in my arms because I was about to get a drip. And they made sure that people knew that I was going to be admitted. So I ended up going and getting the cannula put in and they gave me a drip. You know, the um, it's like a little tube and it goes to a saline bag or whatever it was that they were giving me. I think it was antibiotics because I had this like chesty thing going on with the bad flu. So they gave me this like a hat stand and it had wheels on the bottom and it went up with like a hook so you could put the sack of whatever it was going into me it was up there and it was coming down through the tube into my wrist right so I'm holding on to the this like what I, what I call the hat stand and I get up to the room where I have to be in as I walk in there's two beds on the left two beds on the right and every there was three room beds already taken so the one that I was in was the first bed on my left as I walk into the door. So there was a lady next to me and there's two ladies over here. Okay. So I made myself comfortable, got into bed, thinking, oh my gosh, it's cold. So I asked for another blanket and I was lying there thinking, how the hell am I going to sleep? Because these three women are really loud. They snored really loud. So I'm looking at the TV screen that because we all had TVs coming down from the roof so everyone could watch TV in their bedroom, in their beds. And I'm looking at the little red light that is the turn on light. You know how lights, um, TVs have the little red light? So I'm looking at this little red light thinking, I am not going to be able to sleep because these three ladies are all snoring and making me know I'm awake. So I'm just lying there thinking, la di da di da and a nurse walks in. She actually sat on the bed, and she said, how are you going, darling? And I said, oh, you know, first night in hospital. Yeah, fun. And she's looking around at the ones that are snoring, and she says, oh, yeah, it's going to be a fun night for you, isn't it? So straight away we had this rapport. We had this um, connection. And she says, oh, well... You know, I've been, I said to her, you know, what how, What time did you start? She said, I've been here for a while. Um, and, you know, I, I work here, I do the night shifts and I walk around making sure everybody's comfortable and um, just make sure that everyone's safe and feeling good for the night. Nothing different. You know, it wasn't anything that any other nurse wouldn't say. And she said, well, in the morning when you wake up, you can go out the door turn left there's a corridor and at the end of the corridor there's a door which is locked she said if you come and see me at the nurse station I'll give you the key because I'm the matron and, I, and you can get the key and I'll let you open up that back door because when you go in there it's a shortcut to the cafeteria where you can buy magazines and a coffee etc but she said you've got to be careful because when you go into that door, the stairs go down and then you turn around and then the stairs go down the other way. But then at the bottom, there's a double step. It goes quite long. And she, and she said, oh, I've tripped on that so many times going down there. Because you think you're at the bottom, but you've still got that half step before you finish the, you know, it's an extended step. So she had this little giggle with me. And I just thought, wow, what a nice lady. You know, she's sitting here. She's obviously got work to do, but she's spending that time with me. And she was with me for about 15, 20 minutes. You know, nurses come in, they just sit, they do their work and then they go. But this one didn't do any temperatures. She didn't check my blood pressure. She didn't do any sort of nurse, um, pardon me, what I would say, duties. All she did was just sit on the bed and talk to me. 
So she said at the end of it, you know, I've got to go now. I've got other people to see. And I said, oh, thank you so much. See you later. So some point after that, I went to sleep. And in the morning, I woke up because these other women in the room were just so loud. And they started waking up and they were talking to each other. You know, you think, God, can you shut up? You know, I've just got here and now you're keeping me awake and now you're keeping me awake again. So they woke me up. And this nurse walks in and she's got her coffee with her. And she said, oh, I had your sleep last night. And I said, oh, that other nurse that came in last night, she was brilliant. You know, I said, I've got no complaints about the staff here at all. You're all so nice. And she said, oh, um, what was her name? And I told her the name. And she said, oh, what did she look like? And I just didn't really think much of it at that point. So I said, you know, what she looked like, she had a white dress on and it had a zip coming up the middle and then it had a little collar on it and it had short sleeves and she had her hair, her hair was tied up in this bun on the top like Princess Anne does, like that. And... She looks at me. She says, um, can you wait a minute? And I thought, this is a bit weird. What's going on here? So this morning nurse, she left. And about, oh, it was about five minutes later, she comes in and she's got this huge photo frame of this, like a group shot of nurses and doctors in it, all this staff photo. There was probably, oh gosh, 50, 100 people in it. I can't remember. Um... So anyway, she, she brings around this painting and she says, this nurse that you were with, can you see her? And I said, yeah, there she is right there. This morning nurse looks at me and she says, um, that nurse, her name was what you said. She was a matron here back in the day, but honey, she died in a car accident five years ago. What? When she sat on the bed, my bed went down with the weight. But there's no weight. That's the first thing I want to say here. When she sat on the bed, the bed went down under her bum. When she walked, I could hear her feet on the floor as she walked out of the room. What the heck? What the heck? So this experience happened to me when I was in my early 20s. And I didn't really think too much of it then. But over the years, you know, now I've done my PhD and this sort of stuff, paranormal stuff, to try and work it all out. Since I've had my own near-death experience in 2001, where I'm really working it all out, I sit here sometimes and I think, how the heck, when she sat on the bed, did the bed go down? I don't think we are ever, as human species, I don't think we are ever going to know the answer to that question. We can make up theory after theory, correct? Um, As to what sort of scientific theory would suggest, because it can't prove it. You know, the only way to prove it would be to actually obtain a ghost, like in the movie Ghostbusters, where we've got it contained and physically say to it, sit on this chair so we can ascertain the scientific theory as to why the chair goes down with your weight of gravity when you don't have a body so therefore you have no gravity so how can you have a weight see this is weird how did her feet make that noise when she walks around when she was walking out of the room now in my other video i just did today where i'm talking about saging i actually said something in that too I said I've got a wooden floor here in my house and some nights I hear six or eight of them walking around and it's heel toe, heel toe, heel toe, heel toe, heel toe. 
as they walk. How the heck can they make noise when they've got no weight with gravity? Very frustrating, isn't it, guys? You know? So then we look at the fact that she is there. How the heck does she still be at the hospital when she died in a car accident? So obviously she has travelled. And in my book, which is called Ghosts, the Psychology of Why They Stay, I actually give a reason for it. And I'm not going to tell you it's here. Because I want you to read the book. Oh, Linda, you are so cruel tonight. I'm going to be giving away free copies. So please go and join my Facebook group if you're on Facebook. Or stay tuned here because I'm going to run a comp some competitions when it's in PDF form so I can email it to people. Hope that's intrigued your interest in ghosts tonight, guys. Stay safe, stay warm, wherever you are. I'll talk to you all again soon. Bye.